Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Dev Diary. Now for a while now, I've been on a mobile game excursion to find some new and interesting game ideas, which has been tough, but I found another that I wanted to try remaking, and it's actually taught me a few things. So before we get into what I learned, remember to leave a like if you enjoy the video and subscribe if you're new to the channel, and also remember to turn on notifications so you don't miss future videos. So I don't know what exactly this type of game is called, but it often has the word alchemy somewhere in its title. It's a simple quote unquote logic game that has the player choose two or three elements of some type uh, of thing and if they match something new is unlocked for example fire and water would unlock steam then sometimes those unlocks match with other things and the loop continues a very fun way to pass some time though often frustrating because sometimes the logic doesn't always make sense Regardless, I made a clone based on that experience. To the left, we've got a list of possible items to discover with a few base elements unlocked from the start. Which, by the way, I used stock icons for this project to save on some time. And surprisingly, I was able to find the exact same icons that a lot of these games use. Anyway, the player can hover over these icons and it'll display the name of the item if it's been unlocked. The player can click on any unlocked item and add it to their queue, which is represented to the right side of the screen. Sometimes these games allow for like up to three items to be queued, but we're going with two to keep things simple. The function responsible for adding items to the queue is set up to automatically do so to any available open slot. Keep this in mind for later. The player can remove an item from the queue by clicking on the corresponding square. Or when two items have been queued, the player can then submit them to check if they've made a match. And this is where the learning begins. See, going into this, I assumed that this was all just one big filter system, masked with some pretty icons and a simple gameplay loop. So I made a master list of every possible item in our game, which included their name, an image reference, and the ingredients needed for a proper match. And the execution seemed pretty straightforward. Run through the list and eliminate anything that doesn't require the queued items. Sounds simple, right? Well, remember how the player can queue items in any order and they're automatically applied? Well, when certain things are queued, for example, air and air, this broke the original check system. And since items could also be queued in any order, we had to check for all possible variants of the match. And this would sometimes trip the check and count or ignore things that it shouldn't be. So instead, the alternative was a much less elegant hard coding of this check. This would give us a definitive answer on specific matches, regardless of the order or duplicates. And so when a proper match is made, the resulting outcome is unlocked if it hasn't already. That result is also displayed above in the right hand side of the screen with a little particle effect as a celebration. And if it's not a match, instead a giant X is drawn to the screen for a couple of seconds. I should also note that the function responsible for the combo check also doubles as a status check, meaning when the queue list is filled, it also checks to see if the outcome has already been unlocked and will display said outcome automatically, kind of as a way to remind the player that yes, in fact, they did already try this. And this was honestly a pretty wild ride. <laughs> I've no doubt that the way that these games usually operate is through a simple filtering system, but that duplicate entry thing was a very unexpected oversight. And the alternative wasn't ideal, but hey, it, at least it worked. Though it would be, without a doubt, a much larger headache with three cues. Still, as always, it's fun to try something new, you know? And it's always humbling to learn something wasn't as easy to pull off as originally thought. And quite frankly, I would love to get this working in a more, like, automated fashion, if only because it would be a great foundation for a crafting system, which is one of the many things that have eluded me for a while now. So between learning a few new things and doing something I've never done before, this was fun. And so what about you? Have you played one of these uh, alchemy games before? And for the devs out there, have there been any mechanics where you thought that it would be a, a cakewalk going in only to realize that you were uh, in way over your head? I would love to hear from you all, so be sure to share your thoughts in the comments. And finally, if you enjoy what I do here, supporting me on Patreon will not only help me keep doing it, but also net you some sweet exclusives like access to exclusive content and game downloads, or even early access to the weekly videos before they're released on YouTube. But with that said, brings us to the end of today's Dev Diary, so thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.